Found out from new wife the depth of ex-wife's infidelity. Here just to vent, I have no way of getting closure from this due to my ex-wife being dead. My ex and I were high school sweethearts and married two years after high school. She was truly my first love. I joined the Navy after high school and I asked, let's call her Lisa, to marry me. I left for boot camp, a school and sub-school, job training for civilians. I would see her whenever I could, she would come out to see me, and it always felt like I was the most important person in the world to her. She had a way of making me feel like I was loved and desired, and I would return the favor in every way I could. For some context, my ex-wife was what the internet would call a BBW, which is my kind of woman. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have married her. Although I loved every inch of her body, she didn't. I'm not making excuses for her bad behavior, I've just had a few years to reflect on what went wrong. She had very low self-esteem, and what I would later find out, any interest from any another man would help boost that. Some of you know just how that works. Her personality was what really grabbed me, she had a smile that would light up a room and a laugh that I found intoxicating. Without dragging this out, I was head over heels for this woman. Being in the Navy I was very aware that the life of Navy wife was hard, you take a woman away from her family and friends, drop them in a town with no one, then you leave for months on end. I attributed the problems we had in the distance that grew between us to that. I decided early on in my enlistment that I would need to get out after just one tour. I my mind, my enlistment was killing my marriage, even though I exceeded expectations under my command. In which my XO and CO pleaded with me to re-enlist. She just had a hold on me and I wanted to make her as happy as she made me. I had a thought in the back of my mind that she may have been unfaithful to me while she was back home and I on the other side of the country. But me being young dumb and in love, didn't see the clear signs that she was cheating on me. So, I get out of the Navy and come home. I feel so confident that all those thoughts I had and behaviors that were so unlike her would go away, and we would be us again. I couldn't have been farther from the truth. She was so cold to me, leaving the room when her phone would ring getting off work at 4 p.m. but not getting home till 10 p.m. on a nightly basis. I call during these times and no answer. Weekends with the girls where I knew all the girls but was never invited, even though some of their significant others were supposed to be there. Our intimate life went from anytime anywhere, to nothing. At first, I attributed this to her body image issues, which she gaslighted me into believing was the cause. I allowed this to continue for three months. When I called her on her BS, she got angry at me for thinking like that, and told me I had been acting very difficult to her friends and to the life she had built for herself while I was gone. She twisted the whole thing around on me like I was crazy, but in my core, I just knew it had to be something else. I followed my gut this time and left her. We divorced and I moved on with my life. Not willing to allow myself to fall in love like that again, where I couldn't tell up from down, I went on an actual binder. I would smash two or three women a week, before Tinder and social media. Just meeting women and giving them the D the old-fashioned way. I had time to make up for because I had been faithful to Lisa our entire relationship. Fast forward four years, Lisa died in a car crash and during the funeral and repast, I ran into an old classmate of ours, we'll call her Alice. Lisa had remarried and had a kid, so our relationship was as over as can be. Alice had a crush on me back in high school, and I noticed them yams back then. Neither one of us acted on this attraction due to my relationship with Lisa. A month goes by and I inbox Alice. I couldn't get her out of my mind so I took my shot. Once I finally got her on the phone, things were weird. I could tell she was into me but I could tell she was holding back. Come to find out Alice was the roommate to Lisa's god sister during our marriage. After a few conversations and a couple of dates, she opened up to me. She only learned that me and Lisa were married though her obituary. She told me that she had no idea we got married because every time she would see Lisa, she was with a different guy. She even told me that she had walked in on Lisa and a few of these guys having intercourse. She didn't think anything of it because they were some of the only friends in their circle that had their own place. Everyone else still lived at home and their apartment became somewhat of a flop house, which is why she felt the need to move out as soon as she could. But due to her not having a good job or even good prospects, lasted longer than she would have liked. Alice asked me if that was the reason for our divorce, and out of sheer embarrassment, I told her yes. I had no idea about how many guys or how long or how deep her infidelity went. She would tell her friends she was going on a cruise or a vacation out of town, and that would be the time she would come see me in whatever duty station I was at. She would return with gifts that I gave her, money and even a couple of cars I had bought her. Alice thought she had a sugar daddy, which was my dumb self, 
She never questioned it as she just chalked it up to them being young and just enjoying life as independent women. She herself had been dating an older man and felt it wasn't her place to judge. I had to keep up the ruse of me knowing and being over it, but I couldn't help but allow the conversations about Lisa to continue, to the point where I could piece together some of the doubts that I had about Lisa in our relationship that I wish I didn't know. Like how she had been on the phone with me while being in a four-way with the roommate, her boyfriend and a guy Lisa brought by. It was like everything I thought didn't sound right or that didn't make sense at the time was brought to light in the worst case scenario. She had been cheating on me since we left high school and possibly before, but my heart can't take probing deeper, because I believe I would just uncover more betrayal. I don't want to soil her name due to her untimely demise, but damn. What do I say, who do I speak to how do I deal with this? I have learned more due to my wife's relationship with Lisa's god sister, and her time as her roommate. They speak about her as being a free spirit and how she worked her low self-esteem and body image issues into A+, somewhat like a legend. I hear these stories and all I feel is rage, hurt, regret and self-loathing, but I got to play it cool. It's been too long for me to come clean to my wife, as I don't want her to feel like I still have feelings for my ex-wife. Which it would definitely look like because a lot of these stories are new to me and the feelings are fresh because it's often me hearing these things for the first time, and me being blessed or cursed with a good memory, allows me to match those stories up with situations I thought didn't sound right on my end, but I chose to ignore. So here I am on Reddit venting to internet strangers trying to get this off my chest so I can move on with my life. So with that being said, screw you Lisa, I loved you with everything I had and you played me, and to this day has me looking like a fool, so I hope you burn in hell. Now for the top comments. I hope you can come clean with your wife. It doesn't sound like it's helping you, holding it from her, and I doubt she'd think any less of you for believing the best of a woman you loved. Maybe it could help your healing. Absolutely. These aren't fond memories you have. They are deep emotional trauma. You should let them know that their view of her is 180, and she caused you serious deep trauma. She's not a good person at all. She was as selfish as they come and probably did it to her second husband as well. Screw you Lisa, I loved you with everything I had and you played me and to this day has me looking like a fool, so I hope you burn in hell. Let that anger out man, it's beyond needed. I'm so so sorry you've had to find out this way, and things were the way they were. I think the first thing you need to do is get yourself booked into therapy. I know the prospect can be daunting and even potentially silly sounding, but these people have tools and ways to unpack things that will shave years off how long it'll take you to do it alone. That also said, when you feel good and ready, I think you should come clean to your wife that you only knew she cheated, not to the extremes. Explain, like you have here, that you had no idea and you love this woman with all of your heart. You're not weak, you're not a fool, you've no control over someone else's actions, only your own and you've conducted yourself incredibly in light of the circumstances. Be kind to yourself. Exactly, she sounds like the weak fool. You sound like a good guy that had his stuff together and got into a relationship with the wrong woman. This is common in affairs. The cheater looks like a fool. Although it doesn't feel like it, the betrayed is typically the hero of the story. Man that stuff, sorry. You had your suspicions and now you've been vindicated and know that you were not crazy or paranoid. It doesn't matter if it was 1, 5 or 10, or 100 men. It still feels the same. So stop digging and focus on having a good life with your new wife. At least you don't have to worry about bumping into your ex. Now for the next story. Not everyone survives to infidelity. I really tried the long list that you were supposed to do when people got cheated. Focus on yourself, get a new haircut, reach friends or make new ones, go to the gym, cry, find a good therapist, travel, change habits and so on. The first time, I was so young and naive. I didn't even think about cheating as a possibility. At 25-27 years old, I was so happy to have found someone who wanted to spend time with me and possibly the rest of our lives. I didn't notice the little lies, the weird coincidences, the gaslighting and the inaccuracies that he created the last year of our relationship. One day, I decided that I would skip half day of work and go to his place early. I had the keys, however, I always considered it as an emergency pair, we talked about moving together but I wanted to take time before doing that, we were still young. I noticed few odd things in that spare, brand new phone, that was there on the desk. I was curious and I found one year worth of relationships in there. They traveled together, they tried the best restaurant in town, they declared love in the most articulate ways, they did a lot of exting and exchanging pictures. He called me boring, safe and unsatisfying. 
I left him, he called me only once to ask me to give back some stuff. I asked why he didn't left me earlier, he simply told me that it was hard for him to disappoint his parents since they liked me and they would never like someone like her. I was a safe choice for him. In the end they got married and they are still together with two kids. It took me years to recover, years to trust others and myself. Years of trying to build myself back. I moved town, I did therapy, I joined a volunteer group and I stayed away from men because I couldn't trust my guts. At 32 years old, I met Carl. We became friends, he told that he was recovering from a messy relationship. It took a full six months of knowing each other, to kiss or have our first date. I taught, here I am. Healed and better than before, with hobbies and more self-awareness. We had a good two years. We managed to progress slowly and consciously. He told me that he couldn't commit through marriage, but was ready to living together and have a family. I was okay with that, I appreciated how well we could communicate. I received a text message from unknown number, I was more than confused. I simply couldn't believe it. It was impossible, not him. Not us. I did everything right, we were in a good place, that's what I thought. However, it was not the truth. He got his co-worker, not even 22 years old, pregnant during their six months affair. He bought a house, a project that he hid from me, for her and their kid. He told her that I was not an obstacle for them. I stupidly asked him to fight for us, for me, to choose me over her. Well, he didn't need to think or to reflect, he was so happy that I made the separation easy. He chose her and their baby. I tried my best to overcome all of the new traumas. I really did, but I failed somehow. I saw them recently, the baby was beautiful, he waved me like he was an old friend and she gave me a cold stare. I left myself go. I am fat, ugly and barely awake. I spend hundreds of weekend under my duvet, sleeping or watching crap. I am not career driven, I don't care about anything. I am in therapy, however nothing seems to shake me or help me. An old friend that I saw for two dates, told me this weekend that he was in the process to forgive his ex and try again with her. I was suddenly aware that my ex has never even tried to ask me to do something like that. I was just an inconvenience of their lives. A temporary girlfriend, a placeholder that can keep them busy until a younger, accomplished and beautiful woman will take my place effortless. Not everyone survives to infidelity. Now for the top advice. Your life has nothing to do with them. Let me tell you a story. I have an uncle. When he was 22, he walked on his girlfriend with his best friend. He was weak and could not take it. He went into depression. After two to three years, he joined college again. There he met another woman, who was a gorgeous lady. They dated for a couple of years. He then found out, she was cheating on him since day one. Well, he was devastated to say the least. But this time, he did not give up. He took control of his life. He is a short man and previously it made him insecure. But then, he did what he wanted. He started planting flowers. He is great at that. He never dated a girl for next few years. All he did was gardening. He loved us. Well, all the children in our family are just fond of him. He is just the funniest man. Whenever he used to get hurt, he used to laugh and say, my heart have been broken twice, this is just a prick. He then met my aunt, 10 years after the second heartbreak. They are married, our cousins are beautiful. My aunt is the one of the kindest women we have ever came across. We often say that both of them can make even a dead man laugh. They both are funny, and happy. They even crack jokes when they argue. The point is your life is not defined by others. Take control of your life. Sure, you can't trust others, but you need to trust yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey beautiful. I am there with you. As my track record and poor social abilities, it is best to not trust myself. Dating doesn't have any appeal to me after this. I am grieving losing the kids or family I never had. You sound really hard on yourself. You've been through a lot and need to heal. Loving yourself doesn't come overnight, but you are having a negative outlook on everything, which is understandable. Are you in therapy to help with all this trauma? Depression and PTSD are very possible after what you've been dealt. I am in therapy for quite a long time. It helps to be function enough to keep a job and be able to function. I am truly sorry that another innocent soul has been tarnished by liars and hypocrites. It is truly stuff like these that gets me trust issues of my own. The only advice I can offer you is that you have to love yourself. There is really no specific deadline for one to heal. As you have also mentioned, some may not heal at all. But, please try. Don't end it all just because of those toxic people that you have come to know. As for the cheaters, 
Don't ask why, just say bye. Some people don't need a reason to cheat. Focus on the little things in life. The plants, the wind, or watch a few comedy shows. Connect with your family members and trustworthy friends. Meditate or do some prayers. Please find something that will motivate you. All the best, my friend. The last story is titled. I, 22 female, found out that my dad, 45 male, had a lot of photos of my best friend, 21 female, on his laptop, my mom, 43 female, kicked him out of the house and now my siblings, 10 male and 8 female, hate me. This friend and I have been friends since we were 16 and 17 years old, she was always like another member of the family, my parents used to treat her like another child and we would never have expected something like that. They've been married for 25 years and I used to think that their marriage was perfect, they never fought, it seemed that they loved each other madly, but it wasn't like that because a few weeks ago I found a pen drive where my dad, 45 male, has about 400 photos of my best friend. At first, I wasn't surprised because some of the photos are from two years ago and two years ago he portrayed her for an exhibition, he's a portraitist, but later I saw more recent photos, photos that were not taken with her consent, and if that wasn't enough, he has many more photos than he took from his sketchbook, he has a sketchbook full of portraits of her, and in some of them he portrayed her without clothes, and I'm so sad because in 25 years, he only portrayed my mom, 43 female, about 3 times I think, but suddenly he has a sketchbook with at least 40 portraits of my best friend. I confronted him immediately and he didn't even try to deny it, he just said that he was sorry but that he couldn't help it, that he's in love with my best friend, I asked him if he was cheating on my mom with her and he said no, that she, my friend, doesn't know anything about it, and that I shouldn't say anything but I did. I was so mad that I showed everything to my mom and now she wants to get divorced, she kicked him out of the house and she's so sad. She cries all the time and my siblings blame me because they think I caused them to separate. I also talked to my friend, and she denied that anything happened between them. She told me that she always treated him like the father she never had but never thought of him as a man to flirt with, and I believe her because she's not that kind of girl, and because she has a boyfriend and I know that she's very much in love with him and they're planning to get married. And that made me feel good because I didn't want to lose her too. But guilt is killing me. My siblings miss our dad and don't want to talk to me because they're mad at me. Even my little brother told me that he hates me because it's my fault mom kicked our dad out of the house. Maybe I should have waited for him to tell my mom or something else? I was really impulsive and ruined our family, I know I should have reacted differently, what can I do now to make them feel better? Now for the top advice. You did the right thing and the best thing for your family and your friend. Your siblings will realize what's happened eventually, they're young and don't understand what's actually going on yet. Your family will be better off because of your actions. Considering his behavior sounds a bit predatory. Especially with the pictures taken without her knowing. I'd say you handled it well. Your siblings aren't old enough to understand what's happening fully. Or why it would even be creepy. Considering he's like a father figure to her, I'd say this is just really creepy. No. You did not ruin your family, your dad did when he decided to make naked sketches of your best friend while knowing your mom will be totally against it. To top it off, in love with her too? Your siblings are too small to see logical side of it. They are acting out because you guys were always a happy family and now it's like the house broke down. Give them time. It's now on your mom to explain it to them, because they won't trust your word. So, give it a bit of time but do remind her that your siblings will keep hurting until she sits down with them and explains it to them. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you